Hello. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how we can use Dialux Evo to complete a lighting design using the Lumen method. So in previous lighting design uh, assignments, we used the point source calculations because we were doing an outdoor uh, calculation. But in this one, we're doing an indoor calculation. So we use the Lumen method because this will take into account effects from reflectances on the surface of walls, ceilings, and floors, but then also takes into account maintenance factor and the dimensions of the room that we're working in. So before I go into use Dialux, I'm just going to briefly show you the scenario that we're looking at on my overhead camera. So I've sketched out a scenario here where we have a room. This is a plan view looking straight down, and its dimensions are 20 meters by 15 meters. So these are example dimensions for this one. Then looking at the elevation, the height of the room is six meters. So again, it's 20 meters wide, 50 meters long, and six meters high. And two important things we need to know for this is how high the lights are gonna be mounted beneath this, the ceiling itself. In this case, they're one meter. And what's the height of the working plane is as well. So that's the imaginary plane that we are going to be calculating our luminance at. So again, to remind ourselves, this is the lumen method. So we can use the lumen method to work out what will be the average of luminance across this whole surface. If we know the number of luminaires, the number of lamps per lumen, the output of each lamp, what's known as the utilization factor, which takes into account how much of the light energy reaches the surface and the maintenance factor, which takes into account how the light decreases over time, and the area of the room. But we can work backwards using this equation. If we transpose it to get the number of luminaires on its own, we have a way now of estimating how many luminaires I need to put into this room to achieve a certain illuminance by working backwards. So if we look at this equation, if we know the desired illuminance, in this example, I'll be saying it'll be 300 lux on the surface. The area, which we can work out from the dimensions of the room. The number of lamps per luminaire, I'm gonna keep that as one in this example. The output of each lamp, we're saying that we're specifying it has to be as close to 3,500 lumens as possible. The utilization factor, which depends on the room index and the dimensions of the room. And for this example, I've calculated about 0.705, but this does depend on the manufacturer's data sheet. So this, is a, this isn't something we put into Dialux. And finally, then the maintenance factor, which for this example, I'm keeping at 0.8. So with all that information, we can use Dialux then to put together a design for this room. So looking back at Dialux, this time we're using simple indoor planning. I'll start this up. And the interface is quite similar to what we've done with the point source calculations. You can see we have a construction tab, a lighting tab, and will be a calculation as well. But we can start off by providing some information about a room. I call this one example room. And description is demonstrating the lumen method, but you'll be putting in a more appropriate description for your own scenario. I'm able to put in the dimensions of my room. So if we recall from my own example, I'll pull these up on this side of the screen so you can see them as well. You can see here that this room is 20 meters wide by 15 meters long and six meters high. So if I just expand dialogues very quickly, we can see it's adjusted the size of the room. And if we look in 3D, you can see now it's created that room for us. I'll go back to the plan view. The other thing we have to tell it is the height of the working plane. So in this example, again, I've said the height of the working plane is 1.2 meters. This will change depending on what you're doing. And all that's adjusting. 
is the height of that yellow shaded area. You'll see here if I make it exaggerate the height of it, we can move it around. But for this example, it's 1.2 meters. Okay. As I said, the maintenance factor you can adjust here staying at 0 0.8. So the last thing we have to make sure is that the surfaces, the reflectance of the surfaces are input correctly. So we do that here with materials. We tell it how much of the light that lands in the surface, how much on average is reflected from the surface. For this example, I didn't note it on the sheet, but for this one, it's 70, 50, and 20% respectively for those values. But that can change, and you'll see that when you do your theoretical calculations. So at this stage, we have the construction of the room complete. So the next one is to determine a suitable light put into the room. If we go back to the details here on the right, I said I wanted something close to 3,500 lumens with one lamp per luminaire. So I just happen to have one here at the moment that's already been brought in from Loom Search. You'll have to go do your own search. But I, uh, in this one, we can see here that it's 3,630. There are other options if I want. You can see here as I scroll down, different lumen outputs and different color ratings. But for this one, this is the closest to what I've specified as 3,500. So we'll use that, which is, but it's a little higher, so 3,630 lumens. So expanding our dialogues again. At this stage, we've selected this room. We can use this option to automatically arrange a number of luminaires for this space. And this will use the lumen method in the background. So click it. You can see here it's placed in a number of luminaires in this room. So if we're looking here, it's determining right. Based on what you've told me, you need 64 luminaires to achieve the desired illuminance. And if you look back, the desired illuminance we've said is 300. But if we look at dialogues and look on the left under this tab here, we'll see the targets actually defaults to 500. So we can adjust that then to whatever we need it to be, in this case, 300. And click apply again, and it'll recalculate the number of luminaires that you need to put in. So you can see there I've recalculated. It's aiming for 300. So let's reduce it down to 42. And it's saying, right, that the current looks based on the measurements is about 330. But We've learned about uniformity before. We'll see what that means in a second. But one more thing we should be cautious of here. It defaults to place these luminaires up directly on the ceiling. You'll see here, we can see they're on the ceiling. If I go back to my scenario, I'm after saying we have to mount these luminaires one meter beneath the ceiling. So we can do that. We can go back to dialogues. If we come here to position, we can change the height of the luminaires. And in this case, it's one meter beneath the ceiling, so they're going to be mounted five meters above the surface. And that's typical. We can do that. We can hang luminaires. If you look in the room you're in at the moment, you'll see that they are, some of them are hung directly from the ceiling. It's good practice to save, but I won't be saving here. So at this stage, we've placed our luminaires. If we check, at this stage now, we've placed our luminaires at the right height. We've got the dimensions of the room set correctly. The only thing we need to do now is calculate our results up top. And Dialux will automatically then calculate at all the different points in the room the illuminance based on this light and design. So the final thing you need to show for this assignment is what is the average illuminance across the floor? We can see here it's 300, or sorry, the working plane. We can see here it's 348 lux. So it's higher than what we were aiming before, but the uniformity as well, as you can see, it's not perfectly uniform. And you can adjust your design for that if you need it. So if we select one of the luminaires, because it will be a group of luminaires, 
can see here the results coming out at 42. Okay, so that and that stage, that's your simulation done. So your next step will be to carry out the calculations using the equations you can see here on the right to see how does your simulated result, in my case 42, compare to what you'll get in your theoretical. But for your assignment, the values will be different. So, okay, thanks for watching.